Hey, Shalom, Israel. Uh, first off, I just want to say, Ka Halal, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rakak Wadash. want to get double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Just want to say uh, peace, blessings to the sincere, hopeful elect brothers that's out there pushing this word in uh, all uh, sincerity and truth. Uh, through the spirit, uh, I'm just really just uh, laying back in on a lesson me and the brother Mike Yala here in the Dallas camp did the other day. Uh, but I just wanted to go more so into the aspect as I know Christianity and then just any people that proclaim to believe in the Bible in this society but really not have the true understanding being the elect uh, they have a misinterpretation of what grace is uh, we always go into grace is pretty much like a time period just to basically get yourself in order uh, before a consequence happened like you might have a grace period you know on a payment that you owe someone so by giving you a grace period they're giving you a set time to come up with the payment that you owe and if you don't meet that uh, requirement that arrangement then some type of penalty is going to be assessed so the most high through the spirit you know the creator of all things he's the creator of this concept but I just wanted to go into the proper understanding of the concept as it applies to the scriptures and how men of the Lord are supposed to carry themselves, man. Because, you know, as far as the law is concerned, we know the, the law is righteous if obedience is always in the picture, as long as you're keeping the law. But the scriptures tells us in Romans, the eighth chapter, that, you know, uh, mankind and more so specifically the, 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 the chosen people, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, we would be uh, creatures uh, made subject to vanity to where we wouldn't be able to keep the law perfectly. And then furthermore, at this point in time, the nation of Israel, you know what I'm saying, we're serving captivity under our oppressor. So that's why there's a need for grace. That's the point that I'm going into. But I just want to kind of hit as to kind of the angle that I'm going in on the lesson. But without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the first scripture I wanted to get. Uh, this is in... Uh, Romans chapter 6 and I'm going to just start at verse 14 it says for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace and we know that uh, sin it, it, in the, according to the Bible sin is transgression of the law you know what I'm saying but if you break one law if you break one law uh, you're basically uh, guilty of going off in all man you know and there's only one man who came in the flesh that kept the law perfectly and that was Jehovah Shah so that's why through his blood sacrifice the elect through grace is able to be saved through faith you know what I'm saying but the, the understanding that I wanted to get into there's still obedience required like the point I was making to start off you know what I'm saying before a penalty comes that grace period man there's certain requirements that have to be met you know what I'm saying you just can't do what you want to do and that's what I'm going to prove with a few, you know, precepts. But I'm going to keep going here. It says, this is Romans 6 and 15. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? And this is a question. Paul in this letter to the Romans is saying, what then? Shall we sin, transgress the law, because we are not under the law, but under grace? And it says, God forbid. Hell no, man. You know what I'm saying? So we're still expected to keep the law. You know what I'm saying? You're still supposed to keep the law. That's why a, a law is a basic uh, or it's a measurement of, of, of right and wrong. Because people, they always want to talk about doing right and doing wrong. But okay, what's right and what's wrong? What's the, what's the standard? What's the metric of right and wrong? So there's a law, but the law is found righteous if, if the, the, the person that's beholden to it is being obedient, is keeping that weight. So just because we got grace under Yahweh Shai, to basically go off in some of these things that we really can't do in this flesh or in this particular situation that's no uh, excuse or justification just to be random and just just go basically go completely off man you know that's not what the scriptures is talking about I want to get this real quick this is Saint Matthew uh, chapter 5 verse 17 it says and this is Yahweh Shah speaking the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ if you had a red letter Bible the words will be in or the letters will be in red this is saint matthew 5 and 17. it says think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets 
I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. So Yahweh Shah, when he came in the flesh on earth, man, you know what I'm saying? He, he uh, fulfilled everything that was written in the law to perfection. You know, that's why uh, those uh, wicked Pharisees and Sadducees and, and priests, they were trying to come up against him, man. And ultimately had him crucified by the Romans. Because he came in that in that perfect stead, being that perfect sacrificial lamb in the law. He fulfilled the law. He kept the law. He kept the Passover. He kept the high holy days, man. He was in the spirit of the law. More so, that's the understanding right now under grace. It's about being more so in the spirit of the law, as far as judgment and discerning. But at the end of the day, there are still requirements. You're still required to keep the law. That's the point. To the best of your ability, like we always say. Uh, Judges 5 and 11, it says, we rehearse the righteous acts. You know? Uh, this is another scripture here. This is in the back in the book of Romans, but this is uh, chapter 3. This whole chapter is, is hella on point, but I'm going to just start at verse 28. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And the scriptures tells us in multiple uh, scriptures that uh, the just shall live by faith. So right here saying, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So Yahweh Shah, he kept that way perfectly. So he was that perfect sacrifice, man to where under his grace through faith the nation of Israel chiefly the elect on the first go around is able to come back into that inheritance inheritance of the most high man into those promises you see it's all justification by faith through that grace that was given man we're given something that we don't deserve man you know but we're not no we're no longer under the curse of the law but that don't just mean you could just do whatever the hell you want to and that's what uh two-thirds of our wicked people think you so-called negroes latinos and native americans and just this whole world in general man all these different nations from the wicked the edomites you so-called white people to all you other heathen nations man everyone's just establishing righteousness according to their own vain imagination and not on any solid standard of measurement you know but at the end of the day we all need grace we all fall short but it's no excuse to not do what you're supposed to do you know uh, this is uh, hold on brothers I'm, I'm about to hit another scripture here yeah this is uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and I'm going to start at verse 2 it says for unto us was the gospel preached and the gospel is the good news of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the gospel of that grace that would be open for the election to receive through faith man you know, it says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well unto thee. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So this word, you know what I'm saying? If it resonates with certain spirits, man, you know, it's going to do one or the other. It's either going to be a blessing or it's going to be to your condemnation. But the point here, it's only going to profit those men who are lined up in faith, man. You know what I'm saying? Using this grace, not for, uh, uh, li or, or this liberty for an occasion to the flesh, like the scripture says. But just being fully engaged in the obedience through faith in Yahweh Shah, man. You know? Yeah, that's all I want to get on that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there was another scripture I want to get. Just bear with me one moment, brothers. Yeah, I found it. This is uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 15. And I'm just trying to find a good place to start, brothers. Sirach 15, and I'll start at... Man, this is all good. Sirach the 15th chapter, by the way, brothers. I'm just trying to find a good place to start just to make the point. Matter of fact, yeah, this is uh, Sirach 15 and 12. And I'll just all read all the way down through the end of the chapter. Because it's all good, but I just want to start here. And I'll just close out with this one, actually. I didn't want to make it too long, but the Spirit was on me to just go into this topic. You know. Sirach 15 and 12, it says, Say not thou, he hath caused me to err, 
for he had need for he had no need of the sinful man because jacob do that too well or just people in general man well the lord you know he made us we're his creation so they'll try to say basically the, the or justify the things that they're doing just because the creator basically put the spirit on them to do that but the most high he don't need of a sinful man even though at the end of the day the most high put the spirit on who gonna be righteous and who gonna be wicked but for those that can receive this word you know what i'm saying it ain't no you ain't you can't basically use uh grace and the fact that the most high created us uh to be that way to just willfully go off if you proclaim to believe the word that is it says sirach 15 and 13 it says the lord hateth all abomination and they that fear the most high love it not so the the elect the men of the lord we fear the most high which the fear of the most high that's the beginning of wisdom you know what I'm saying we hate with the lord we hate what the lord hates so we hate abominations too so when we see all types of manner of wickedness man being played out in the earth man that's why brothers in the spirit we compel to speak on it man night and day because we really care man you know what i'm saying we we care about what the most high cares about and that's righteousness at the end of the day order balance you know all of those goodly things sirach 15 and 14 it says he himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel so we know at the end of the day the most high sets up everything but it's going to just go into it i'm gonna keep reading if thou wilt to keep the commandments and to and to perform acceptable faithfulness you know what i'm saying so he gave the the israelite man the 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 the, the israelites chiefly you know what i'm saying like it says in deuteronomy the fourth chapter around the fifth verse he gave us the law statutes and commandments man that would be our wisdom in the sight of these nations man of how to upright to walk uprightly because we're just, we're supposed to be the people to govern the, the whole earth and the rest of these nations the lord gave us that uh code of conduct to live by that these other heathen nations didn't uh possess we had it we went away from it but through the sacrifice that yahweh shah made because he came in the perfection of that way we have a way through grace and faith to come back in so it's a balance you know what i'm saying we keep the laws to the best of our ability through faith because we understand the, the fear of the lord we fear the lord's judgment we understand the power that created us you know especially in the stretch that we are coming into now all types of prophecies coming to pass we're trying to receive mercy this is sirach 15 and 16 it says he had set fire and water before thee stretch forth thine hand until whether thou wilt before man is life and death and whether him like it shall be given him and here's the points in these last three verses that i really want to hit it says for the wisdom of the lord is great and he is mighty in power and beholdeth all things so at the end of the day man you know you can try to fool men but the lord the, the eyes of the most high ten thousand times brighter than the sun you know he beholdeth all things you know so that's why it's important to uh use this grace and liberty to offend less and increase in the spirit of the lord increase in the spirit of obedience man you know it says verse 19 and his eyes are upon them that fear him and he knoweth every work of man so the lord he looking at those children those obedient servants who fear him and he knows all the works of man you know verse 20 here's the last verse in the in the point home it says he hath commanded no man to do wickedly neither hath he given any man license to sin and sin is transgression of the law so the lord he didn't give us no commandment to do wickedly or give us any permission or license to go off to break the law to sin you know even though he created that all things he also put a spirit on you and a mind to be able to wait things out you know that's if you proclaim to believe in this word if you if you understand this word you know so really this is for the house you know for sincere brothers man to just take heed consider your ways man don't just use this grace period and i'm talking to myself as i'm speaking to the camera don't use grace man just to be more niggardly man you need to just come in that glorified stature of our, our ancient forefathers man and the legacy of our greatest uh you know example to date yeah i was shot you know so with all being said you know uh, hopefully this is edifying to brothers just more understanding on what that true grace is 
I uh, want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rekha Kadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to you sincere brothers. Keep pushing this word. Shalom.